Welcome, you guys, to today's uh, show. Uh, this is the Invest Brilliantly Broadcast Show, and this is a show where we talk about investing for cash flow, because cash flow is what gives us freedom. I want to welcome you guys to the to the show today. Give all you guys a chance to kind of get yourself on. Hopefully, you guys can hear me okay, and you can see see me okay. Let's just see what we got going on here. Welcome, fresh guys. I want to welcome you. Fresh guy says, let's go. Yeah, you're right, baby. Let's go. I'm with you 100% on that. Our show today is going to be an interesting show. Today, I'm going to be talking about something that I'm sure I'm going to get some, some haters on. Some haters going to come out, come out of the woodwork like they do sometimes because I'm going to be talking about don't buy real estate. That sounds kind of strange coming from a guy who's spent his whole life investing in real estate, right? <laughs> Hello, Patrick. Welcome to the Welcome to the show today. Appreciate to seeing you out here today, buddy. Good to see you. Yeah, we're going to be talking about don't buy real estate. And I'm going to talk to you why, about why I say that. You know, I've been around a long time and I'm an old man. And I can tell you, I've seen three or four different markets come and go. And this market is really reminiscent to me of a market that I have seen in the past. And so I'm going to be talking to you guys about how you can, um, how you can protect yourself on the downside. So if you guys think that that's a good thing, protecting yourself from the downturn, hit me up in the chat, say hello, and say, yeah, protect myself. Hey, Bethany, welcome. Welcome, Bethany, to today's show. Thank you so much for showing up. It's going to be an interesting show. Tell your friends about this. Share this right now, guys. Get people on here. Because I'm also going to be talking about some strategic moves that people can make right now to protect themselves uh, and that they should be making, in my opinion. They should be doing it, and not even six months from now, they should be doing it now. And we'll be talking about that and uh, showing you guys some strategies for moving forward. So, guys, today's show is brought to you, uh, is brought to you by the Note Mentor. You guys, uh, the Note Mentor is going to be um, sponsoring the show. And here's what I can tell you about this particular program that the Note Mentor has. They have a program that in which you can learn how to invest in mortgage notes, which is one of the alternatives that, that I will be talking about today that uh, some people should be looking at. But you can learn how to do that, and you can learn how to do that uh, at a very affordable price. Go to uh, investbrilliantly.com, and you can actually just log in right there. Oh, when you get to investbrilliantly.com, you'll see – that there is a page, I'm sorry, a link on that page that says something about coaching. Go there, check it out. Hey, I see my wife made it on today. Hello, love. That's my wife, my lovely wife, Pat. I welcome you to the to the uh, show today, Pat. Hello, Jenny Nicole, my biggest fan out there. Man. Jenny's always on board. Hey, Jenny, good to see you. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. All right. So, as I said, today's show is um, today's show is don't buy real estate now. The reason I say don't buy real estate right now is because real estate goes through cycles. Right? We all know that. We know that well, real estate goes through cycles. And about every seven to 10 years or so, uh, a crash comes. And it has forever. And uh, and I think that one of the things that's going on right now is we've gone too long. You know, who thinks who on here thinks we've gone too long? Hit me up on the chat. Hey, Lewis. Welcome, Lewis. Lewis says, Bessie, long time. Long time no see, man. <laughs> Glad you're here, buddy. Glad you're here. So let me just tell you guys, I do believe we have gone way too long right now, not just not seeing each other, but also between crashes. Uh, I've been uh, in, an investor since the 80s. I started my uh, investing career back in 82. And so I was able to witness a crash in the 80s and the 90s and the 2000s. And then uh, here's what I can tell you. In 2007, when the crash started, back in 2007, 8-ish, uh, the government took some steps that I think is going to hurt us right now. Uh, the government started printing money, right? It's been, it was a good run. Patrick says, yeah, it was a good run. You're right, Patrick. It was a good run. But 
that run is over, if you ask me. This COVID-19 has just killed that run. And there's other things that are also going to impact that run. But the government printing money can only work for so long. You know, the market needs to correct itself. They always do. Not just the real estate market, stock markets, they all markets correct from time to time. I think it's going to take a lot to, to, for this correction to really heal itself. And I think it may never even come back, especially on the real estate side. And here's why. Supply and demand. We all know about supply and demand, right? We all know about supply and demand. Supply, if, if there's a high supply and not many buyers, then prices come down. And I think that's what we're heading for. And the reason I think we're heading for high, uh, a, a high inventory and low demand is because two primary factors. Right now, I think we can all agree that for the last 40 years, or 60 years, actually, the economy has been driven by a group known as the baby boomers. Baby boomers started being born in 1946. And for about 18 years, there was just there were more babies born in that 18 year span than at any other single period of time in history. And that group drove the economy. Initially, it was baby clothes, baby shoes, baby everything, right? And then later, it became houses and then schools. They had to have lots of schools for babies, and all these communities grew up all around the country. And these communities got big, and malls developed. Well, you know what? All of that stuff is all behind us now. The baby boomers are now on the back nine, as they say. As a matter of fact, they're like, we're on the 18th hole, 17th hole, most of us, right, of a golf, to use the golf analogy. And what that means is this. We're no longer driving the real estate market. During the 80s and the 70s, when baby boomers were just hitting their stride and starting to buy houses, prices were going up, up, up. And when there were downturns in prices, it wasn't long lasted. But because of what's happening now, baby boomers are downsizing. They're getting out of the big houses. They're going into communities where seniors live and live in downsizing. They're empty nesters. And so that's the first thing. So I believe that that demand, that lack of demand for real estate is going to be a problem for the real estate market. Also, if you got your money in the stock market, think about this. At age 70 and a half, the government requires that we take our money out of our retirement accounts. And most of the baby boomers, we have our money in our 401ks and our IRAs, and it's invested in the stock market. So if we have to start taking our money out so we can pay taxes on it now, what's that going to do to the stock market? I don't think it's going to help. So if you get your money tied up in the stock market, you really need to seriously think about doing something different. And today I'm going to share with you something that I think you should do. However, let me get back to the baby boomers. The baby boomers are pulling their money out of the stock market. Baby boomers are not buying houses right now. As a matter of fact, we're selling houses. So therefore, we're increasing the supply of inventory. And then on the flip side of that are the millennials. The millennials. The millennials are that, that, that generation right now that's just coming up. They haven't yet hit their peak buying years, which is about 46, 47 years old for most Americans. That's our peak buying years where we buy more than ever. And obviously, the baby boomers are already past that. Gen Xers are already moving past that. I mean... So that we need the millennials to step up. But here's something that the millennials know that I didn't know. Well, this is a reality that wasn't a reality for me. The millennials have seen people lose a lot of money on real estate. They saw the market crash hard in 2007, right? 2008. I didn't see that when I was a younger man. I mean, I only saw real estate go up. It might have dipped a little bit, but overall, it was up, up, up. And that was because baby boomers were pushing through, right? And we were raising our kids, and we needed houses and all that. Well, all that's behind us. And what I'm seeing right now is this from the millennials. Millennials are not even interested in owning houses. Thank you, Patrick. Patrick says, wise words. Fresh guy says, hey, sounds like you got a plan, Desi. I do have a plan. <laughs> I do have a plan. I'm not just going to put out the bad news. I'm also going to give you the good news. I like to give people the good news, too. 
people don't always follow the plans that I have, but of course, uh, you know, as long as as long as I put it out there, I feel like I've done my part. So millennials know that houses can go down. And by the way, millennials like to share stuff. I mean, they ride share, right? They share their Ubers. They share bicycles. They share scooters. I mean, they share houses. They share their apartments. That's what they do. And they're not really interested in buying houses, as we can already see. Most millennials don't even own homes. I talked to one today, 27 years old, young man, has a lot of money in his savings, doesn't have any, doesn't own a house though, didn't even talk like he even wanted to buy one. And that's just the way it is. And, you know, most millennials today, if they've gone to college, they're strapped with amazingly high student loan debt. You know, the first generation or maybe second generation of people that have just come out with this crazy student loan debt. So that's another reason that they're not rushing out to buy houses. And they're also delaying getting married and delaying starting a family. I mean, all these factors coming together make me say or make me believe that we're going to see softening of housing prices. Now, that being said, what's the plan? OK, here's the plan. If you have real estate, you better get your equity out of it. Get it out of it as fast as you can. How do you get your equity out of real estate? Anybody in here have any real estate? If so, how would you think you can get your equity out of your real estate? Let me see what you guys might say over here in my chat. Let's see. I can't see all the chats, but I can see a few. All right. No, not getting any responses. Sold mine, Patrick says. I like it. Yeah, that's one way you get your real estate out. Uh, get your equity out of your real estate. You sell it. That's That was good advice. By the way, the person who told you that must have been a really wise person. <laughs> I told Patrick <laughs> about a year or so ago. I said, man, you really need to seriously look at pulling your equity out of your real estate and doing something else with it. I shared that information, that uh, advice also with um, – with a doctor friend of mine recently, and uh, he's going to be doing the same thing. Selling his real estate, sitting on his cash, larceny. <laughs> Wait a minute, fresh guys. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Larceny. I like it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, let me tell you guys uh, a little story here. Okay, here, here's what I can share with you. My own personal story. Back in 2006, uh, I was considering selling my house. Six and seven. I was considering selling my house. I had built this house. It cost me $420,000 to build it. It was on an acre of land, single-story home, about 3,000 square feet. Really nice place. Beautiful. Custom everything all through the place, you know. And uh, I was here in Southern California. <clears throat> and I decided... It had gone up in value so much. It uh, doubled, more than doubled in value. It had gone up to, my neighbor sold one just like mine on an inferior lot for 870,000 bucks. And I paid 420 to build mine. And so I thought, well, I should sell now. This was in 2007, I believe. I should sell now like he did. And I thought, I said to my wife, let's wait one more year. When it hits a million, we're selling, we're out of here. But you guys know the rest, right? It never hit a million. I should have moved on like my buddy did, but I didn't. I let greed hold me in there. And then what happened was the market flattened out. It was going up, up, up. Then it flattened out because that's the first sign. You start to see the market flatten out. And then what happened is the market started down. And we know that 2008 was one of the – was – since the Great Depression, the biggest recession that our country has experienced. We saw property uh, prices fall, fall, fall. And the mistake that I made is I didn't sell at the right time. But once I realized prices had flattened, I thought, oops, you know, I was a real estate agent at the time. So I knew that the flat market was a sign, but I didn't realize how fast prices were going to fall. So immediately when I realized the market had flattened out, I put my house up for sale. Put it up for that 870-ish. I don't remember the exact number. It may have been 850 I may have put it up at. I don't remember. But I do remember this. When the market flattened, all the buyers that were in the market just took a wait-and-see attitude. And that's the problem right there. 
because they're thinking, well, the market's flat. Maybe it'll fall because as a buyer, what do you want to do? If the market's going to fall, you want to wait until it falls before you buy. And so I started chasing the price down because what happened was the prices started to fall in my neighborhood. So initially I was at 850, 8.70, then I took it down to like 8.25, but it was already too late. The market had already fallen below that. So I've come down to the market, then the market falls below that. Dude, you don't want to be there. And so I'm telling people right now, don't put yourself in that position like I did. I knew of two people that sold their houses back then, my neighbor and another guy that I knew who owned a, um, a uh, bait shop in Oceanside. And he was selling bait. And he said that he was going to sell his house, which he did, and just sit on the money because he believed that the market was going to crash. And he was so right. So he, he sold his house, sat on the money. And when the market crashed, he went over to Carlsbad, California, which is a primo area, and bought himself a beautiful place right on the beach, which he could never have afforded if he hadn't taken that strategy. And so all I'm simply saying to you guys is, you know, use your head, okay? If you have money in real estate, if you have friends or family with money in real estate, share with them this, that it's time to do something. It's time for a bunch of different reasons. As I said earlier, seven, every seven to 10 years is a typical turn, turn down in real estate prices. We are at 12 years right now. And the only reason we're at 12 is because the government was printing money to prop up the market, and that was working until COVID-19. They're not going to be able to save this economy by printing money, although they're trying, right? They just approved $2.2 trillion in additional spending. It's a Band-Aid, guys. It's a Band-Aid. There is a market crash coming. It always happens, but this is going to be a bad one, and there may not be a recovery. And if there is a recovery, my my prediction is it's going to take 20 years to come back. So if you got money sitting out there in the market, if you got money inside a 401k or an IRA, here's what you need to be doing. You need to be investing in mortgage notes. Now, what is a mortgage note? A mortgage note is a debt instrument. If you've ever borrowed money to buy a car, for example, you signed an IOU, a promissory note. Well, a mortgage note is that. It's an IOU, but instead of a car as collateral, it has a real estate, a piece of real estate as collateral, like a house or an apartment building or a shopping center or a golf course. That's the collateral. Collateral is this, anything that you can take away if people don't pay you back. So if you buy a mortgage note, like, for example, some of the notes that we sell, we sell mortgage notes on cute little houses in nice towns all over America that you can get cheap. If your money right now is in the stock market, if your money right now is in real estate, you need to take it out of bricks and mortar. You need to take it out of the stock market and put it into a mortgage note. Because as a mortgage note holder, first of all, you're going to buy that mortgage note at a discount. What does that mean? If a person owes $100,000 on their mortgage and we go to that bank and we agree to buy the mortgage from that bank, we don't give them $100,000 for that mortgage. We get it for less than that. And depending on how strong we're able to negotiate, we could get it for uh, a lot less than that. And so what I'm suggesting to people is to do that, first of all, because if you do that, even if the property values fall, you're still protected because of the equity that's already in the property. When you buy a mortgage note, in most cases, the homeowner has equity in that property to begin with. If they owe $100,000 on that property, the odds are high that that property right now is worth more than $100,000. So let's just say they, the house is worth $150,000, they owe $100,000, and you buy that mortgage for $80,000. So you've only got $80,000 invested, the property's worth one fifty. dollars even if the property value falls to $100,000, you're still good. Even if it falls to eighty, dollars you're still good because as long as that person keeps making their mortgage payment because they don't want to lose their house, what's the difference to you? What's the, val the difference in the value? And here's the good news. Uh, if, in fact, the property value does get down to what you paid and the people stop paying you, you get the house. And you don't have to do anything with the house. You don't have to sell it. You can rent it out until the market comes back. If you want to be a landlord, that's an option. If it's a beautiful house on the ocean, you can go move into it, right? 
We had one like that down in Florida that if it had gone into foreclosure, I would have kept it as a second home. So, you know, those, those are some options that are available to you. If you want to know about investing in notes, let me get back to my buddies over here at the Note Mentor where you can learn how to invest in mortgage notes in their program. They have this great program where you can be coached by me and by Patrick, my partner, on how to invest in mortgage notes, even if you don't have any money. Now, that's a key thing that I want you to keep in mind. We can show you how to do it even if you don't have any money or if all of your money is tied up. I know that sounds unbelievable, but I can tell you personally, I have built a million dollar investment portfolio over the past couple of years using other people's money. And I can show you how to do the very same thing. So it's not about how much money you have. It's about how much desire you have. And so my million dollar portfolio pays me thousands of dollars every month. And it is going to continue to do that for the rest of my life. If that sounds good to you, get over to investbrilliantly.com at investbrilliantly.com. It, you can uh, literally log in there on my website. You'll see a spot that says, tell me about your coaching program. When you get to the coaching program, click on that button. I have a video on there that explains the whole thing, how it all works. And for 97 bucks a month, I can show you how to set up a million dollar portfolio. And literally, if you follow my plan, in less than four years, you will be a millionaire and you will have somewhere between fifty and seventy-five thousand dollars a year in passive income coming in from your investments. Okay, does that sound good? Does that sound good? I'm not going to send you a link. Just go right over there, right? Go to investbrilliantly.com with no money. That's right. That wasn't hype. Okay, it wasn't hype. You just need to know, right? You don't know what you don't know. So I just want to invite you guys to uh, to uh, learn more from me. Let me work with you. Let me mentor you. Let Patrick mentor you. Okay? There you go. Patrick says, www.investbrilliantly.com. That's it. That is the link. You want to hit that up? Oh, we got Mr. Yi on. Hello, sir. Hey, guys, if you have any questions or anything like that, I'm wrapping it up right now. If you have any questions or anything like that, you can certainly type them into the chat, and I will run with that. Otherwise, I will be wrapping this thing up, going home and having some dinner. <laughs> Does that sound good, though? Hit me up in the chat if you think that sounds good. Does that sound like a plan? I'm thinking it is. Fresh guy says, yes, sir. Yes, sir. That sounds good. Glad you think so. Because it is good. All right. Give you guys another couple seconds here if there's anything else you want to do. Oh, by the way, too, if you guys are not already a member of our group, our Facebook group, you want to join our Facebook group. It's called the Cash Flow Mortgage Note Buyers Group. Get into that group. We do trainings in that group as well. Okay. And um, I like this here. Yee says, hey, Desi, good advice based on real experience. <laughs> That's so true. You know what? Wise people learn from other people's experiences, right? You don't have to experience everything yourself. As a matter of fact, it's kind of foolish to try to experience everything yourself. So um, you should learn from my experience. As I said, today's show, Today's show was all about don't invest in real estate now. Now you guys know why. This is the Invest Brilliantly broadcast. I will be broadcasting every Monday at 4 o'clock. I also want to tell you guys that every Thursday at 4 o'clock in both Pacific times, I will be on Thursdays, I am targeting and talking to people about their retirement accounts. So if you don't have a self-directed IRA or a 401k, or if you do have one and you want to get it working and performing better, join me on Thursdays for our retirement rescue show. All right, guys. Well, I want to thank you all so much for today. I'm wrapping it up. I'm going home. God bless you. And uh, I hope to see you guys on Thursday. And if not, get back with me here Monday. God bless you. Be safe out there.